Okay, cool. Uh, MSCL add-on. Add um, there's a great pod, uh, blog post about um, why MSCLI and add-ons are kind of the next big thing. Um, uh, Ember itself kind of um, been working with it for quite a while now. It's just great to be able to move from project to project, bring people on uh, on a team, or switch them uh, from one company to another, and just you sit down in front of an Ember project, and you can just be up to speed pretty much instantly. Um, what Ember CLI and Ember CLI add-ons bring to that is the ability to um, write code that then can ship against multiple different apps and kind of sorts the whole code sharing uh, side of things out amongst various other things. Great post, worth reading. So MCL add-ons can do all sorts of things to your Ember app. Pretty much everything you can do in an Ember app, you can then package up, ship out, share with someone else. So routes, controls, views, components can be packaged up, styles. Uh, you can add middleware in development for proxies and various other things. All these things we'll go through in the course. I'll basically you know, go through a bunch of different examples from the plugins that are out there. So finding add-ons. Um, when you generate an add-on, you get uh, package.json for, uh, for npm. Every one of those comes with Ember add-on as a keyword. And that's how Ember CLI knows that something that you've installed into the project is an add-on. And that, as a side effect, means that when you go to npm.js, uh, npmjs.org, you can just search for Ember add-ons, and you've got them all there. And as we have shown a minute ago, emberaddons.com, great place just to be able to really easily search and find, uh, find what's out there, and yeah, growing every day. Uh, so yeah, once you've found an add-on that you want to install, all you have to do is npm install, save dev, whatever the add-on is. Uh, some add-ons will come with generators to do things like install Bower packages, install other packages from NPM, uh, and generally it's Ember generate, whatever the add-on is, they should say in the readme. And then that's it, you restart your server, you're away. So there's an add-on that I wrote the other week that adds um, HTML sanitization to an app, so you can, anyone can be typing in whatever it is um, into like, content editable areas, and you can guarantee that when you're displaying that on the page, They've not added dodgy script tags and things like that. Uh, so to create an add-on, once you've got Ember CLI installed, much like in, uh, creating an Ember app, it's just Ember add-on, whatever the add-on name is. It'll go through and generate all the, uh, the files you need. One cool thing, it generates a, a dummy Ember app inside of the test directory, so you can develop the, uh, the add-on just in that one place. You don't have to link it to another project. Um, to run it, and it also means that all your integration tests run against um, a live copy of uh, a real Ember app. Um, and then pretty much, just like building a, a, an Ember app, you just stick files in the right place, and it just works. All the versions of Ember CLI meant you had to mess around with you know, telling it where to find certain files, where the trees were. Now it's just a case of stick them in the right place, things happen. So the convention is there's an add-on directory where you put uh, basically all your add-on specific files or components, utils, everything should kind of live in there. And then anything you want to uh, be brought into the app that's in installed into, you import and then export again in, in app. Um, so as an example, so yeah, Ember Sanitize, we've got in the add-on directory, I've got a util called Sanitize.js, um, which basically is just a exports a, a function that you give it some HTML, you give it a sanitizer config, uh, and it spits out sanitized HTML for you to use. And then in the app directory, there's a, a helper that then imports sanitize from Ember Sanitize, Util Sanitize. So basically, the, everything in the add-ons directory gets exported in the, a namespace of whatever the, uh, the add-on's called, so that in your app, or from within the app directory in the add-on, you can just import from anything from within there. Uh, and here we just export a, a handlebars helper that takes some HTML that's bound to the, uh, the view, passes it through the sanitize um, util, and spits out a, a safe string. So that's just going to, every time you change something on the page, it gets run through sanitize. And that's basically it. Once you've installed that, that would just work. 
apart from this requires the sanitized JS power package. So you could ask, you could put in your README, say, OK, to, you know, to use this add-on, just add this to your bower.json, bower install, uh, and you're good, but a bit of a pain. So here you can generate, uh, add a blueprint or a generator, which basically does that for you. So when you run um, Ember Generate, Ember Sanitize, this will add a bower package to the project and install it for you. All done. There's similar hooks for um, add package to project, which will add a um, NPM package. Um, it used to be that um, the CLI add-on itself would, um, you'd add things in a bower.json there or the package.json, and then that would get installed when you install it, but just led to various nightmares. So now it's basically the, your apps, package.json and bower.json are the definitive source. It makes things a hell of a lot easier. Um, and then in the index.js of um, your add-on, there's an included hook, which basically as soon as the add-on is run within, a, within an app, this gets called, and this gets given the Ember app, which is what you have inside of the your Brock file. And here you can call whatever you want that you would normally do inside of a Brock file. So here we're just importing from the bio directory sanitize.js. Uh, so now you can just do what we had on the first slide, which is npm install, ember sanitize, ember generate, ember sanitize, all done. Uh, so as I was saying, generally you'll um, add all your add-on files in the add-on directory and then import and export them in the, the app directory. Um, what you can also do is if you had an index.js in the add-on directory, that's kind of the default namespace. Um, so that then, instead of having to import sanitize from Ember sanitize, util sanitize, and know what the internal structure of the add-on is. You can just import and export the bits you want, and that's kind of your public interface to the add-on. So here in another app, you could just import sanitize from Ember sanitize, and you don't have to know where things are stored internally. Now for this add-on, not really much point there. There's only one util. It's not very complicated. But for kind of more involved add-ons, um, I've got a I don't call Fireplace, which is a Firebase um, model library. Uh, and this has a ton of different things you can import. So models, relationships, stores, transforms, this, that, the other. And if you had to know exactly where it was inside of the add-on that these things were stored for you to use it, it's a bit of a pain. So here in the add-ons, uh, add-on index.js, I just export all the things that you should have access to. And then when you're using it in your app, you can just import model from Fireplace instead of import model from Fireplace model model, which is kind of a weird place for that to be. And at some point, I'm going to move that. And if I hadn't got the index, when I move that, everyone's apps would break. So this is kind of your, your public interface that you kind of maintain. And everything else is kind of up for grabs that you can just move things around and know you're not going to break stuff for other people. Um, so another thing you can do is extend configuration. So everything in uh, an Ember apps uh, config environment uh, there's a config hook in um, the index.js in the, the root of, a, of the add-on, which kind of defines everything that add-on does. The only thing you need in, a, in an, uh, uh, the index.js is the, the name, but there's a bunch of other hooks uh, included, which included the, the Bower package uh, earlier is one of them. Config's another, takes the environment, modifies it, does whatever it wants to it, spits it back out. Uh, and anything you have in your environment will override this. Uh, so this is from Ember CLI content security policy. And this basically sticks into the environment, um, a default set of CSP headers. And if it's in dev mode, um, then it um, adds unsafe eval so that uh, live reload and things like that work. So that's modifying uh, configuration environment. Um, a different way of doing it instead of um, hooking into the config hook is you can just stick a file in config environment.js with pretty much exactly the same thing. And Ember git version does this. Um, so this, when you install this add-on, um, it will add into your environment the current version of your application, uh, the current shar of your, your git repo, uh, and also prints it out on the console. So if you're sharing it between a bunch of members of a, t of a team, you know exactly which version of the app people are running. If an error happens, you can log that to wherever. 
Um, you can modify the index.html that's generated. Uh, so a fairly new thing is these content for um, bits have been stuck in the index.html. And that means that from your add-on, you can just stick things into the, the consumer's um, index.html, both for the main app and for test. So there's also content for test head and content for test body. So you can inject things just into the test runner. Um, and then, yeah, so this is how live reload works. It takes content for the content for hook. Um, if the type is head, it sticks a script tag in there so that live reload works. So commands are another thing you can, you can add. So DivShot adds uh, a bunch of commands so you can take your Ember CLI app and push it up to DivShot. Um, there's similar things about like pushing your app up to S3 and various things like that. Uh, and this just has an included commands hook which takes uh, an object with the name of the command and um, all the stuff that that command does. It does a lot. It's worth checking out because it's quite interesting how you can just basically add a bunch of commands to your, your app. Uh, you can post-process uh, the tree that's generated at the end of the, at the, end of the build. Um, so this is MSCLI auto pre prefixer, which basically takes the styles tree, so all the CSS that you've written in your app, just write it however you want. This will then take that at the end of it and add all the prefixes on, make it work for all various different browsers. Um, again, all you do, npm install, MSCLI auto pre prefixer, and your CSS works everywhere. Uh, dev middleware, so there's a server middleware hook, um, and this is how, the, again, the live reload um, middleware works. You get config object in there, which has the app and a bunch of options, and that means any uh, express um, middleware that you want to use, um, set up proxies, various things like that, you can just hook in uh, and you're away. So. By default, um, Ember add-ons will look for things in you know, conventional places, so the add-on directory, the app directory will get merged into your app tree, vendor gets merged into your vendor tree. Um, if you want to put them in a different place, you can just override the tree paths. Uh, Liquidfire does this because the Liquidfire add-on repo is also a fully-fledged Ember app, so that you can just clone that, run it, and see all the, the demonstration um, animations going on there. So obviously, app for them is an actual Ember app. It's not the app that you want to be merging into your own app. Uh, so here, you just override where it's looking for things, and you can organize your add-on however you want. You can also override uh, tree for hooks, which is the old way that you used to have to do things before the conventions approach. Uh, but if you want to store things in a you know, dynamic location or um, look for certain files based on the environment, uh, then that's a good place to, to override things. Um, since the past version, few versions of Ember CLI, I generally haven't had to touch this. And if you look at most of the new uh, CLI add-ons, none of them really do anything with these kind of things unless they're doing kind of advanced stuff or for backwards compatibility. I think uh, Liquid Fire does things like that. Uh, so the testing story is basically the same as an Ember app. You've got access to all the same uh, integration unit tests. Um, same deal that um, you Ember serve uh, in the add-on directory, and you get the dummy app being served at localhost two, uh, 4200, and the tests again run. And that's just the same as developing a, a regular Ember app. That's a whistle-stop tour of, uh, of add-ons. Questions? Got some questions. Yeah. Um, so would this work well for kind of modularizing your app by just say you wanted a login thing that would handle the login screen and everything? Would yes. you be able to bring that in? Yeah, so basically you could take any part of your app and just package that up, stick it in a, an, an add-on, put it in a private Git repo with its own controllers and everything. And yeah, yeah, exactly. Uh, there's uh, Ember Admin uh, adds uh, admin areas to Ember apps, as okay. the name suggests, and that does basically a bunch of controllers and routes within an add-on, and okay. you just install that and. So how do the routes and stuff merge with your own routes? Um, I haven't looked at it myself, but in Ember Admin in your router, it gives you a function to call, okay. and then cool. you give that options basically where to mount it. 
Um, I don't think there's many conventions over that, so that's probably something that's developing, but it's, it seems fairly straightforward. And, and then with the liquid fire, you said that's a separate Ember app, so is that will be separate from your Ember Yeah, it's just the, the repository that the add-on is in is also an Ember app in, it, in itself. Okay. Um, so the, the documentation site, when you go to liquidfire.com or whatever it is, right. is the add-on, but it's the Ember app within, within that. So when you run it in the context of your own Ember app, you're only taking the add-on files. Oh, right, yeah. so that's why they override right. wet effects things from because that would collide with their demo app, basically. Cool. Yeah. How easy would it be to do one to run? In another, um, it, it it just works if you reference it in the uh, package JSON of the uh, the NPM um, oh, yeah. definition. Uh, if you add it in uh, dependencies, not dev dependencies, then that will be installed when you npm install it. And if that's got a uh, Ember add-on keyword, that just gets installed within your your app as well. Um, I don't know if there's a limit on how deep that goes, but um, certainly, from, I haven't done it myself, from what I've, I've, I've so seen on IRC, people have, have done that kind of thing, yeah. Is there a way to target specific versions of an add-on? Uh, yeah, just, uh, again, it's npm, so you can just link it to a, to a version, so in your package.json. Um, tag it to a version. You can tag it to um, specific uh, Git repositories and obviously tags and shell hashes and things like that. So everything you can do with npm basically. Yeah. So um, what hooks are there in um, uh, the actual build? So would it be possible to do something, say, after after the it's the ES6 has been transpiled, but before it you know even does the development concatenate and all the. I don't think there's. You can basically. I'm not sure you can specify when it gets run. You can, uh, after everything gets run, you, there's a post process hook. So you can guarantee that everything else has happened. Um, run it on the final tree. But I don't think there's, or I don't know of a way of uh, inserting it in between two other add ons or specific stages. Yeah, that I know of. It, like, you know, it doesn't like ES6 syntax, right? So if you, you get to run it after. Get it after the transpiling has happened. It's all been, you know, put into a valid block. It's all yeah. There may well be a way, because I know JS hints, uh, there's the uh, ES next add-on, which means you can write ES6 um, you know, classes and, and everything, and that gets transpiled to JS. Um, and then I think JS hint gets run on it. So there may well be a, a way of doing ordering, but I'm not, I'm not sure. Cool. OK, thank you.